So first things first is I'm going to introduce um, Mr. Josh, who helps uh, run the Flex Academies. He's like the big guy behind, he's the big guy in charge. He's the CEO. And uh, he helps us do all of our activities together. Um, he was able to have uh, Ms. Kendall come greet us today. And then Kendall is what we call an environmental education supervisor at the Stanford Museum and Nature Center in Connecticut. And Hunter, that's not far from you, right? Didn't you say you live right near the border of Connecticut, New York? Thumbs up? Yeah? Cool, okay. Yeah, you're not far away at all, okay? And so just a reminder, we'll let them talk and then um, we'll kind of go from there. So again, everybody um, listen up really well. If you have a question, raise your hand. We're gonna do questions and answers later as we go, okay? so. Mr. Josh, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Yes, I may be the CEO, but but the reason <laughs> this whole thing works is because of people like you, Thank you. and because of Kendall. So I, I just happen to have that title. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here, uh, kind of leading this discussion. Um, I have been lucky enough to watch Kendall uh, in the zany zoology class since we started Flex One and moved online. And I can tell you that it is one of my favorite classes. I can tell you that is one of my daughter's favorite classes. And I always know when she's doing zany zoology because I can hear her yelling from a couple of <laughs> rooms away about how tall is that animal or how furry is that animal or how many eyes does that animal have? So it's an amazing class. So Kendall, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Yeah. Oh, well, thank, oh, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Hunter, I saw you yesterday, so I'm really excited to see some familiar faces and I'm excited to meet some new friends as well. Um, so I'm, I'm really very, very, very happy to be here with you guys. Good. Kendall, there, before we get started, there, there's always been something I thought that was like very unique about you and like very cool. And I think I keyed in on it yesterday when we had a conversation. And I'm not saying that everybody from Colorado is cool, but you seem like you have this ooze, this kind of outdoor and just very relaxed about you. So tell everybody where you're from. I've kind of given it away and how you got to where you are today. Sure, sure. So yes, so I am originally from the beautiful, colorful state of Colorado. Has anyone's ever been there? I don't know if I know you guys are coming from all over the country. So um Colorado is a really cool place. It has all sorts of amazing animals. Um, and so I grew up in the foothills of Colorado because if you've ever been to Colorado, um, we have a very large mountain range that goes right through it called the Rocky Mountains. And of course, we're not the only state who has them, um, but it does mean that we have a lot of really interesting um, wildlife that we can observe. So from a very young age, I loved going outside and trying to find as many bugs as I could find, as I could, um, and to just observe their behavior. That, and of course, I like to watch all sorts of documentaries about animals. My favorite channel was Animal Planet. Um, and I just grew up just loving animals and just really becoming fascinated with learning about how each animal almost has their own personality in many ways. Some, of course, have more bigger personalities than others, others but um, that was always a lot of fun for me. And, but I'm, I'm just in general, I'm a type of person who just likes to learn about different things. So even when I was studying something different, like history, um, when I went to college, I still always enjoyed learning more about animals. And the more that I learned um, to identify what I was at, what was surrounding me, the more I was able to learn about them and just to appreciate. So even when you walked outside or went on a walk in a park and you could identify different types of trees and learn about the habits of chipmunks versus this type of beetle, it always just made every walk a, more of an adventure. So. So how'd you make your way from Colorado to Connecticut? Well, that's a, sure that's just a straight shot, right? Easy enough. Yeah. Boom. Yes. No, but, but, you know, in general, nature is never a straight shot. Um, so as I mentioned, I actually studied history. I studied history at Bates College in Maine. 
Um, so I know your friends have questions and I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. Um, so I studied history in Maine and then I even studied history all the way in Scotland as well, which is in the United Kingdom, which is across the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean to be specific, which has a very um, interesting environment as well. Um, but as much as I love to learn about things, I wanted to also share my love of learning with others. And so I really wanted to be not just a teacher, but I wanted to be a really good teacher. So when I came back after I earned my master's degree, I came back to the East Coast. Um, first, I was in New York City where I was one of the uh, Teach for America core members and I taught preschool in Brooklyn for a little bit. And then I ended up here in Connecticut and I started teaching in museums where I really love to learn about the different think um, artifacts that museums had and I liked really sharing them with different groups of people especially if it meant that I could go outside and just talk about the animals and plants that are around us so that's a, short, that's a short and short version no 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 it makes it makes perfect sense and then how'd you make your way into teaching because you're you're a fantastic teacher ah well thank you um so I started teaching um even in college, I was teaching, well, I was helping with homework um, with some of the ch school children in Lewiston, Maine. Um, and then after I came back from Scotland, I actually, no, sorry, before I went to Scotland, I also worked, because I took a little bit of a break between my college years and when I went to graduate school, and I worked as a long-term um, substitute for children with special needs. So in elementary school, also in Lewiston. Um, again, just really wanting to learn how to make things interesting because one of my favorite subjects is history and I had always heard that history was quite boring. I don't know, have, you guys are a little young for, but maybe social studies. Do you guys remember social studies in school? You guys like social studies? I love social studies, but sometimes people are not always a big fan. And so I wanted to change people's minds about it. I wanted to make it really interesting. So I wanted to be a good teacher. So um, by being a substitute teacher, and then when I was a Teach for America core member in Brooklyn, that too, just learning how to um, talk to kids if they're tired or maybe not having the best day and just trying to turn that day around. Um, it gave me a lot of really good lessons so that really when I was really interested in the subject and of course when I have the ability to work with animals like I do here at the Stanford Museum um, you can kind of that that passion for learning is very contagious so so for teaching it, it started with research and then in for my graduate school but then my background in substitute teaching and all others they kind of melded together into museum education where I got to teach different programs to school children that were visiting. And Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so last question for you. These, these little people who are on this uh, call here, they're going to chart their own paths, right? And, sure. But if they want to have a career that is in animals, what could they do now to begin to prepare themselves for that career? Well, there's a lot of reading and a lot of walking. So you have, it's really good to, well, first, first and foremost, you need a very, very active curiosity. So if you really like to learn about what's around you, and frankly, I loved, I loved insects, I loved all sorts of invertebrates when I was little, but maybe I didn't pay as much attention to the plants that were around me when I was little. But now I'm learning about both of those things and it really is very interesting because they have their own adaptations, which are things that living things do to survive. And plants are just as fascinating as animals. So you really need a very strong sense of just curiosity and a willingness to learn. And part of, well here, is, yeah, as you guys just found out, I'm actually not from Connecticut. So, and Connecticut has a very different environment um, to, 
uh, to Colorado. So I had to learn all the different animals and plants that live here. And so it took a lot of reading and just exploring and then learning from other people right. as well. well. So that's yeah. important. <laughs> As you can probably tell, and you know, the curiosity is oozing out of these children right now. So we'll wrap up this part of our <laughs> of, of the uh, conversation. Um, and I'm going to let you take it from here. And I'm going to sit and watch. Uh, I can't wait for this part. So it's all yours. Okay, well, wonderful. So yes, yeah, so I, I greatly appreciate that. Um, so I'm actually going to quickly share my, sorry. I'm going to share my screen really quickly, just because I would like, um, I know Hunter, you're close by. I don't know, Hunter, have you ever been to the Stanford Museum before? No, well, if you haven't, for friends who have never been here before, which I guess is most of us, um, I'd like to show you a few pictures. So I'm, if it's all right, I'll just share my screen mm -hmm. for a moment. Okay, so welcome to a very quick look at the Stanford Museum and Nature Center, which is of course in Stanford, Connecticut. So here at the Stanford Museum and Nature Center, we have a few different things that you guys can come visit and which have allowed me to vi um, explore all different parts of nature. So we have a Hexer farm, which is a working farm, which has all sorts of amazing animals, um, such as our goats, for example. We have Aww. baby goats every year. Aww. So here are some of our babies from this year. This is uh, Sweet Pea right here, and she is uh, over Hostley with her two babies, Violet and Ash. Aww. And then, so that's always a very exciting um, element to our spring season. Um, but in addition to our farm, we also have our exhibition gallery. So people, again, I'm a type of person who just loves learning about all different things. So whether it's animals, art, and um, as you will see also, plants. So we have trails that you can go visit. And then finally, we also have a telescope where you can look at the wow. star um, and all the other things that are up there. So there's really a little bit of a lot of things. But my favorite part of working here at the Stanford Museum and Nature Center, because one of the greatest privileges that I have as an environmental educator is that I get to work with live animals, which I know you guys are really excited to see. And I do have some that are going to visit with us. Um, so most of them actually live in our Hexer Wild exhibit. So you can see a few of them now. Um, we have our milk snake here, Guava, and uh, Kylo, our red-eyed tree frog, and of course, Mr. Gizmo, Aww. our sugar glider. So all of these animals are um, very special. They come from all over the world. They are education animals, so they help us on with our programming. Um, many of them are pet surrenders, so they came from homes that were no longer able to care for them. Um, so we're very lucky that they were able to find a home with us. And so finally, before I uh, bring to my, I have Wallace as our last, he's our red-footed tortoise, but now I'm going to stop sharing because I actually have some animals who I think will help me um, explain why working with animals is just so important. So I have my first friend who I'd like for you guys to visit with. So do you guys like animals? I assume so since we're all here. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you are an animal lover? Alrighty. Okay, good, Hunter. All right, I was waiting for that. Okay. So my first friend, and Hunter, I don't think you've actually met him before. My first friend is named Linus. And Linus is, he's probably our biggest, well, He's the biggest of the trio. So oh, this is look at him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so Linus is a white tree frog. He's known as wow. a dumpy tree frog. I'll just move my hand a little bit so you can see him better. And they're called dumpy tree frogs because one, they live in trees, obviously. And these guys live on the other side of the world, actually closer to Australia. So again, a lot of these animals come from far away. Um, but a dumpy tree frog is because if you see, he's got that gigantic mouth and he will pretty much eat anything that will fit inside of it. And because I love, the thing about animals is that I love um, gross facts. And Hunter, you know that, all right? Who else likes gross facts? Gross facts, the grosser the better, right? So his gross fact is he's actually got two. He's got two, if I do say so myself. So. 
first gross fact is that you see that his eyes kind of pop out of his head. And the reason for that is because he does not have muscles in his throat. So when he swallows, he has to do a little bit extra um, to get the food down into his stomach. So his eyes actually have to go inside of his skull to push the food down his throat, which if we had to do that, would, that would be a very, very strange um, experience for us, I think. So the other gross fact about him, and if I really annoy him, he might do it, but he actually holds extra water in his belly. And so he will spray me with the extra water. So it's kind of like he's peed on me, which again, um, Josh, you were asking a very good question. What does it take to work with animals? And part of it is being willing to be peed on or pooped on or bitten. Or it's like having a kid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So those are all things you have, you have to have a little bit of a strong stomach. You have to be okay with holding bugs. Um, and, you know, eventually, and it's going to get messy. So you have to be okay with a bit of a mess. And sometimes they can be pretty smelly. Linus is not necessarily the smelly sort, but he can be on the slimy side because he's, of course, an amphibian and he needs to a slimy frog is a happy frog because they need that slime to be able to breathe through their skin. So I'm gonna put Mr. Lines away because I do have a couple other friends who wanted to visit with you guys since you guys were so kind to invite me. Wow. Alrighty. You can, I don't know if you saw, but he also has those wonderful sticky pads on his toes so that he's really good at climbing and he can pretty much stick to anything. And there was about a 50% chance that he was gonna jump onto the camera. He has done that during other digital programs. Let's see, so my next friend, um, another thing that I love is talking about animals that have a bit of a bad reputation, uh, that make people a little nervous. And spiders and snakes are definitely in there. So do you guys like spiders? Give me a thumbs up if you like spiders, thumbs down or thumbs to the side if you're not quite sure. All right, I see a lot of thumbs down from Hunter. You, you're like 40% there, 30% there. Okay, all right, all right, that's fine. I will hopefully change your mind because the animal, the spider, because I do have to warn people about that. My friend who I'm going to visit with now, or we're gonna visit with now, she is actually our largest tarantula here at the Nature Center. So, but she's actually my favorite. So this is Goldilocks, and Goldilocks is a Chaco Golden Mead Tarantula. So when asking that important question, how many legs is that? So if she's a spider, how many legs does she have? Can you guys show me on your fingers? All right, I'm seeing eight. You're too right. Too many, too many. Too many. Well, I should have gotten, I should have brought my millipede. Now the reason, one of the reasons why I love um, Goldilocks in particular is that she will make, she'll spin spider silk as she walks. You guys see that? Especially, all right. And she's not gonna make a web kind of like, uh, a web in the same way that Charlotte did in Charlotte's web. Her webs are more like lines. And those are just allowing her to keep track of where she's going, but also to act like little, um, trip wires so that when she burrows down into the ground because she spends most of her time on the ground in a burrow um, she can feel whether or not there is an insect or maybe something else even a, something like a small lizard is coming by uh, she'll feel their vibrations so she's actually um, very very tame um, they're the only thing is is that they're very delicate so tarantulas can get hurt very very easily so as you can see, she's not bothered. Um, as long as I'm gentle with her, she's gonna be gentle with me. Um, but the question is, is she venomous is another popular one. And the answer, you guys probably were gonna ask this anyway, but she is, she is venomous. Um, so venomous just means if she were to bite me or if she were to sting me, it would make me feel very good. And she does have some venom because the venom is an important role, uh, uh, tool for her or adaptation, right? And that I'm gonna stand up just so you can see her a little bit better. Alrighty. So the venom, what it does 
is it actually not only keeps, well, stops her prey from running away, but it actually turns all the guts of the prey into like a smoothie that she can slurp up, which sounds delicious, I'm sure. I'm, I'm more of a chocolate milkshake person myself, but she prefers cricket. So, but her venom is, is more like if I were stung by a wasp. So it's not, not too bad, but probably wouldn't feel too amazing. All righty. Have you been, have you been venomed? Have I, have I ever been bitten by her? No. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and actually um, some of our educators here have been doing environmental education for 20, more than 20 years, and they've worked with all sorts of animals, snakes, um, lizards, even some baby lions and things like that. And the one animal that they've never been bitten by is a tarantula. So I actually think mammals are more, far more likely to bite mm. than tarantulas. Tarantulas in general are much more better behaved. So again, that's why I say, and they, they, they really do have really important roles because even the spiders in our houses, they're the ones who are taking care of the bugs that you really don't want there. So th th if you find a spider in your home, if you just put it in a gentle jar, gently into a jar and then let it go outside, you'll, you'll have one less fly out there, which I think we all can agree is a good thing, right? I, all animals are important, but flies, ticks are not my favorite. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So did I change anybody's minds about spiders? Okay, Hunter, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, all right. I'm getting a little. Okay, good. I think you sent me the other way. Sent you the other way. Oh, no. Well, she was very gentle, though. She's very gentle. Yeah. And actually, she can live 20 years. Wow. So the females are um, much more long-lived than the males, unfortunately. The males only live about five years. So I'm sorry, guys. In some animals, the females are actually bigger and they live longer. And then my final animal I just wanted to show you guys really quickly is Elvis. So um, Elvis is a bit of a celebrity. She's actually a giant snake. Oh no. So do you guys like snakes? Thumbs up. All right. Well, just like spiders, snakes have a really important role in the environment. So um, oftentimes when we think of snakes, we think of them as being top predators. We think of like a, an anaconda or a cobra, but oftentimes snakes are also um, food for other animals. So if you took snakes out of that, out of that environment, then actually you're disrupting. Then a lot of animals, then you might have too many rodents or you actually might have, or birds of prey might not have enough food. So it, it actually disrupts the entire environment if you remove snakes. So snakes are really, really important. So my friend here is a Colombian red-tailed boa constrictor. And she's what we call hypomelanistic. So her coloring is um, not quite what you would find norm uh, usually in the wild. So she wouldn't have a very good time camouflaging. So her coloring is a little unique, but we, she's very lovely. And even though she's big, she's actually um, a pretty, pretty docile snake. She's very tolerant. She's very patient. So there should be, instead of long like a snake, there should be patient like a snake. All right. Hi, right, face. So here is Elvis. Yeah, she's holding on to her pillowcase. So friends often ask, why do we have pillowcases <laughs> when we carry snakes around? And the answer is, it's kind of like a seatbelt. So snakes are really good at escaping. And so if without her pillowcase, she could actually get out of the container, the carrier that we put them in. So which we, which we do not want because she is not a native snake by any stretch. And she is a type of snake that Elvis specifically needs a lot of um, extra care. So Elvis actually was um, found. So she, she actually, the reason why I wanted to show you guys Elvis is because Elvis um, has a, quite a story to tell. 
so she was actually found and she had some pretty big injuries to her face, oh. which is why we call her Elvis, because there used to be a very famous singer who, has anyone ever heard of Elvis? I know Miss Stephanie and Mr. Josh have heard of Elvis. Has anyone else heard of Elvis? All right, well, Elvis, he used to do this with his face. <laughs> Can you guys do it? It's kind of, he did it better than I could, of course. Well, Elvis, because of her injury, she has that type of lip permanently on her face, which is why we call her that. So you probably, it's, it's pretty subtle. But you'll notice that one lip is kind of turned up more than the other. And because of that, it, it makes it a little harder for her to eat because as a snake, do you think she can use a fork and a knife? No, right? She doesn't have, she doesn't have feet, hands, right? So when snakes swallow some, their food, they have to swallow it whole. She's checking out the camera. And so what that ends up happening is, is that their jaw has to expand. It has to expand at least the size of the thickest part of her body. So for me, that would be like I could swallow a watermelon whole, which would be pretty impressive, right? Can you guys swallow a watermelon whole? No, right? Me neither. But because of that, because of that injury to her, because she was hurt in her jaw, then it, it makes it really hard for her. So she can only really have small mice nowadays without hurting herself. But even despite all of that, she's a very, very good, good natured snake. She just likes to explore. And you can see that she's doing that with her tongue. Snakes don't have a really good sense of um, sight. They can't see very well. And she also can't hear what I'm saying, even though I'm only saying nice things about her. But Aww. she can't really smell very well. So her tongue is shaped kind of like a Y. So can you guys all like, like that? So it's kind of like a peace sign. So her tongue is shaped like that. And those smells in the air that even our noses can't pick up will land on one side of her tongue. And then it will allow her to figure out where that scent is coming from. So if there's a delicious mouse somewhere nearby, she can tell based on which side of her the tongue that smell lands on, which is pretty cool. So again, all these animals um, have really amazing adaptations. And so for me, who's a person who just loves to learn about different things, it kind of, there's just always something else to learn about them. So thank you. <laughs> all right. So I'm sure you guys have questions. I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say. All right. I'm in shock. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, well, listen up, friends. Um, we're going to take our turns, okay, one at a time. Um, I'm going to start with, is this Kate? Is that you in the corner, my friend Kate? All right, my friend. So what you'll do is you'll ask your question, okay? And then, um, and then Ms. Kendall will answer your question for you, okay, one at a time. Go ahead, Kate. Can you unmute yourself, sweetie? How old is this snake? How old is Elvis? That's a really good question. Um, the truth is, is I actually don't know her, her age. I know that she is fully grown, so I know she's an adult. But because she was found um, outside, she was probably some, she was somebody's pet at one point, but they maybe didn't take care of her and then she got hurt. Um, then I don't know exactly when her birthday is. So I'm not exactly sure, but I can tell you that she's at least five. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very good question. And sometimes that happens with our animals, um, especially if we're not quite sure when they were born and really what their background is. We just know that they needed help. So sometimes I don't have an actual age for her. It's a very Ms. good question. Thank you, Ms. Kennel. Hunter, do you want to ask your question, my friend? Um, how long is Elvis? How long is Elvis? That's a great question. So Elvis is actually about, mm, I'd say she's about five feet long and they can grow up to about seven. Wow. So sometimes snakes are a little bit like um, goldfish, that old saying that depending on what size of the container will be the, the size of your snake. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dina, would you like to go ahead with your question? So I was going to ask 
Um, so, um, is he, po is she poisonous? Is Elvis poisonous? That's a great question. Um, she is not poisonous and nor is she venomous. Nice. So you, um, you're actually asking a very, very popular question. So generally when I was talking about Goldilocks, so people will say poisonous and venomous and poisonous means that if I were to eat something and, or if I were to touch it, it would make me sick. So like a, for example, a poison dart frog. Um, a venomous animal would be like a cobra, so an animal that could bite me or could sting me would be venomous. So Goldilocks, our tarantula, she's venomous. And so Elvis is actually neither one. She is what we call a constrictor. So in her name, the red-tailed boa constrictor, um, the way that she actually eats her food is she does have teeth, but those teeth are meant for holding on to her prey. So um, she'll sneak up on her prey or they'll, they'll not see her because of her wonderful camouflage. Um, and she'll bite onto them and then she'll wrap her whole body around them. And you saw that she's actually quite strong, even if she's um, not squeezing really, really hard. And she'll wrap her whole body around them and squeeze really, really hard. And she's gonna squeeze so hard that it's actually gonna stop the heart of the animal that she's hoping to eat. And then she's gonna swallow them whole. Now, because of, she is cold-blooded, I know, that's crazy, right? But because she's cold-blooded, this is even crazier, your eyes are gonna get a lot bigger, um, she doesn't need to use a lot of energy to keep her body warm at all times. So she actually might eat only once every two weeks. Wow. And that's the most common that they do eat here. Sometimes our snakes in the winter time, they won't eat for a couple months. And that's, that's okay, that's just normal for them. So, yeah, it, so snakes are very, very interesting. Um, great, great question, Dina, wow. Very that's, good question. That's a good question. Is it Jonna, is that your name? J-O-N-N-A? Um, no, you pronounce the J like it's a Y. Juana. No, Jana. Jana, sorry. Huh? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, sweetie. Um, what type of snake is um elvis yeah elvis that's a good question she is a red-tailed or she i should just say the whole name so she is a colombian red-tailed boa constrictor wow. so there's a lot of information in that name but so the colombian part says that she is actually from south america specifically in the country of colombia so and then the constrictor part kind of tells you how she likes to eat so very good question yeah. All right, let's see. Hannah, I can, can't see your eyeballs. Are you there? There you are. Go <laughs> ahead, Hannah. I have a random question. All um, right, I'm good for Here we go. But do, do snakes like him eat birds? Do snakes eat birds? Yeah. Yes, they definitely do. Um, snakes will eat different snakes will eat different things so if you have a small snake which is called a, a garter snake which you guys probably have in um, your backyards it's probably one of the most common snakes that you see they have the long yellow stripes down their body one of their big things that they'll eat are bugs so snakes will eat bugs and then if you think about another type of snake like a king cobra um, King Cobras actually eat other snakes. Uh, we have another snake here called a Californian King Snake, and they're actually able, they're not venomous, they're a constrictor, but they are able to eat venomous snakes like rattlesnakes. So uh, yes, definitely, and um, snakes, some snakes will eat all sorts of things. They'll eat the largest rodent in the world, which is called a capybara. Of course, I'm talking about an anaconda. Um, but small birds, absolutely. Um, my friend who's in the tall case behind me is actually an Eastern rat snake. And she is really, really cool. Um, she actually will be able to climb up into the trees and she'll steal birds eggs nests, oh. or uh, ne eggs in the bird, bird's nest. And of course, potentially the bird as well, so. Is there anything that grosses you out, Kendall? <laughs> Ticks. 
Ah. Picks. <laughs> yeah. So just one thing. Um, I'm not a, a ticks are a big one for me. Um, mites. So little little blood sucking arachnids. I'm also not a big fan of mosquitoes. Mm. So I so here at the nature center we in our, in our trails we have what we call a vernal pond, and um, that's a temporary pond. The water is only there during the spring and the summer because all the the snow will melt and collect at the bottom of a hill. And that's a really important place for a lot of insects to lay their eggs and um, develop. So in addition to the mosquitoes, which lay their eggs there, there are also a lot of dragonflies that will lay their, lar their eggs there. And the larva will be in these vernal ponds for maybe even three years or so. But the dragon, baby dragonflies actually eat mosquito larva. So dragonflies are definitely one of my favorite insects. That's neat. Wow. All right. Little Mia, you're being so quiet. Do you have a question, Mia? No? Okay, you're just gonna hang? Nah, I don't no. have any questions. Okay, oh, you're yeah, okay. you too. You were here with me yesterday. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, Charlie, do you wanna try? Um, why do we not learn about endangered animals? Why do we not learn about endangered animals today? Well, that is a very good question. Well, we do have endangered animals here. Um, and actually, in the zoology class that I teach, we're going to talk about endangered animals next week as well. So, but endangered animals, for those who might not remember what that means, it's just as referring to things, living things that are, that there's not enough of in the wild. And so we're afraid that maybe their numbers are going to go, there's not going to be enough. And maybe at one point we might not have any of them anymore. So there are a lot of different animals and plants and other things that are endangered that don't, we don't have enough of. And actually I do have an animal who is endangered. Well, they're not endangered, but they're considered what we call vulnerable, which isn't quite endangered, but is um, definitely, uh, we're worrying about them in the wild. And I, I can explain a little bit why. So let me grab it. He was having his lunch just a moment ago. Wow. So this friend, he doesn't look oh. too terrifying, but this is Tommy. And Tommy is a eastern box turtle. So box turtles are called box turtles because if you see that line right there on his bottom shell, um, if he gets scared, if Tommy gets really, really frightened, he can pull all of, all of his soft parts into his shell. And then this part right here can actually close up just like a box. So it's really, really good protection. So that's a really very helpful um, adaptation. But why is someone like Tommy, who's got this, looks like he's a little tank, why is he endangered? Well, are turtles very fast? You guys think? No. Right, they're not very fast, but then they travel a lot. So even though um, his shell is very, very thick, because it's a mixture between um, scales and bone, these guys will cross roads a lot. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if it becomes between him and a car, the car is going to win because these guys are not quite strong enough to go under the, the wheels of a car. And especially the females who are going to be looking for a nice place to lay their eggs. And even when they lay their eggs, which can take a long time, they have to be quite old to do it. A lot of other animals like to eat those eggs, including rats, which are not wild animals, but have come with people and unfortunately do a lot of, um, they, they cause a lot of damage. So unfortunately, these guys have lost a lot of their environment. Roads are a big problem for them, but also a lot of other animals like to um, prey on their eggs and things like that. So, wow. so that's the endangered animals is a very big question and definitely one that we really do talk about a lot in environmental education because one of the most important things that we try to um, share with others is not only a love of learning, but also a love of nature and why it's so important to protect these guys because 
as you saw, a lot of these animals came from homes where they couldn't be taken care of anymore, where they can't be in the wild anymore. And so we have to take care of them and we wanna make sure that um, people also feel like we should all have a part in making sure that these guys continue. So, wow. question. <laughs> Ms. Kendall, thank you so much. Thumbs up, everybody. Did you enjoy listening to hear more about what she does at work and at the zoo? And I know we're very excited, at least here in Washington, D.C., our zoo just finally opened up, I think, today. Um, so we're, I think we're super excited about that. And, and if I could just mention, I was in Williamsburg this week, and I saw a bald eagle. Oh, cool. um, yeah, and, I was, and then I saw a deer. And I've noticed since we've all been indoors and school's been closed that a lot of these animals seem to be coming out more and visiting mm -hmm. us. And mm -hmm. we've seen fox and I saw an, an owl this morning when I was walking my dog. So if you all are ever outside, make sure you take notice of what's going on around your houses because you'll probably see a lot of these, a lot of these guys running around and stuff. So Ms. Kendall, yeah. thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah, and actually if you don't know, you should ask. And there's lots yeah. of really good books out there. Um, I used to bring books around with me all the time just because I wanted to learn as much as I could. So it's always good to keep learning. So thank you awesome. very much. Sure, sure. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you so much for being here. I've never had so much fun being so grossed out in my life. Uh, it's been accomplished. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You did yeah. your job for sure. Thank you. We totally appreciate it. Stephanie, you guys have a great discussion. Okay, thank you. We will. And Ms. Kendall, yeah, thank you again. We'll see you soon. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Josh. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. So, friends, what did you guys think of all that? Was that pretty neat? Yeah? All right. Now, hey, for those of you that were in my class yesterday, we made the snakes. Did we measure? Lily, did you measure your snake? Uh, and Dina, did you measure yours? Hold on. Let me. Okay. So let's see, uh, Lily, what did you come up with? Um, I wasn't able to measure my snake. Oh, okay, that's okay. We ran out of time. I think he ended up in New Jersey. Isn't that what we decided? Or you were at the next door neighbors, your snake was so long. That was so funny. Hannah, what about you? What did you find out? My brother's gonna get them to measured. Well, oh. I did it with Kona. Yeah. So we measured it and, and we tried to measure it with a ruler, but that didn't work. And? So my dad had to get like a big one. Uh huh. And ours was long. Yeah. It was like <laughs> 20 feet. Oh no, really? Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. So Yana, you weren't here yesterday, but look what we made, Yana. And then Maria, did you measure yours? How long was yours? Oh, I love it. Nice job, Yana. Well, I know mine's like not the longest because mine only goes up to like my waist and I oh, saw that's right. okay. it up to her head. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mia, did you measure yours? Yeah, my mom measured it this morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so guys, what did you think of the zookeeper? Did you enjoy having her on the camp today? Wasn't she fun? Yeah. That's pretty neat. And I think what we'll do is I'll talk to Mr. Josh and see if we can have more stuff like that, you know, for the other camps, because that really helps, okay. you know, move things along. And it's interesting because we all can't get out right now. So it's nice to have a guest like that. Does anybody um, have anything they want to share about this week? Like this morning, let me tell you real quick. I was taking my dog for a walk and I saw an owl. Hoo -hoo, and he was flying. And I thought it was, for some reason, I thought it was a hawk because his wings were so big, but I looked and it was an owl and he landed on a tree and he was just staring at me and he was going like this with his head, like almost upside down. So that was really neat. Lily, what do you want to share? Um, there's a creek near our house. Yeah. It's just like two blocks down mm -hmm. and it's like a stream. It's very low. You can go in it and just like, you know, hang out and yeah. people try to rope to a branch so they could swing in. Oh. Um, Apparently there are foxes there, uh -oh. and we saw one. And apparent on my birthday once, um, on my birthday once, I was waiting for my friends to come over because it was like my birthday, and they were coming over for a sleepover. Right. And I was waiting at the glass door, and then a fox just randomly walks past my my hat my friend. 
He like, was saying hi to you, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty what funny. What in the world, Hunter? What do you want to share? Um, my snake isn't that long. It's only three point five feet. That's okay. You were making big loops, so that's okay. What um, was what was uh Hannah's uh Hannah's, What did you say you thought yours was? Twenty feet. What? Twenty? Yeah. Holy cow! That's as big as my living room. All right. I also want to say something. Yeah. For you, where you are, mm -hmm. it's like animal week because there's animals everywhere. I know. You know, and I was at Williamsburg earlier this week, and I told you I saw those animals. I saw a bald eagle. And I said, I wonder if that's because I'm doing a camp for Animals Week this week. I bet you're right. And then today I saw an owl. How crazy is that? I said, what? And I wish I had my phone, but I didn't. I was walking the dog. And of course, my dog didn't notice. Maria, do you have a question? And um, um, Go ahead, sweetie. There's a bunny in our backyard. How cool. Maria, you have a question, my friend? Or something to share? Um, well... I went to the creek on Wednesday. Okay. And there was this yellow and black butterfly. Oh. And was so, it a monarch butterfly? Is that what it was? It was yellow and black, not oh, orange. Okay, so not, not quite, not orange. No, okay. I don't think so. Yeah. And, and so we left, but we came back Thursday, the day after, and it was there, uh, it was uh, there again or still there. Oh, see, that's pretty cool. That's because it's animal week. Yana, do you have a question or do you have something to share? Um, actually, um, um, yes, I, or me, my siblings, and my dad found two bunnies. What? Or baby rabbits. Wow. Or yard. Yeah. One was with my dog Lucky when he was outside. Uh -huh. Another was in our game room. Oh, wow. I love bunnies. Bunnies are cool. Um, so next week, I don't think we're going to have camps. I think we're going to take a break from camps. They decided it's because we have to get ready for the fall. Yes, Mia, did you have a question? Yeah. Yes, um, Mia. So. Yeah. Hi. Um, have seen lots of bunnies with my friend Genevieve. Oh, there's bunnies everywhere. I think your yeah. bunnies must be coming to my house. I have a, I, I have a comment. Yes, Hannah. It's not a comment. I'm just. <laughs> That's okay. We see bunnies all the time, actually, and yeah. deer and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, once there was like a bunny and mm -hmm. like a baby, a baby bunny. Oh, look like the family of bunnies. Yeah, a few years ago. Oh, so we took we were just coming back from the grocery store and we just got carrots. Mm -hmm. So we fed them to the bunnies. That's nice. And then something that she mentioned about the turtles you know, sometimes you'll see turtles. I don't know if you'll be driving with your parents. This has happened to us before, and we see a turtle, we usually pull over and then we help the turtle across the street. So if you ever see one, make sure you ask an adult or older person to help because if you grab the turtle by the wrong side, sometimes they can bite you. Nice. So if you do see a turtle, just make sure you let somebody know. And a snake too, although I don't like the snakes. But once when we were on a walk, yeah, we saw a dead tortoise. Oh. But way before that, like two years ago. Oh. Um, like two years ago, we saw it was like wacky Sunday because we saw a turtle crossing the street. And we saw, and a moth was in our car. Oh, yikes. Excuse me? Yes, Dina. Once my mom pet a bee when I was four years old. Well, she did, she said she wouldn't get the stingy part. So it was cool. She yeah. pet a bumblebee. Oh, my. I've heard of people doing that before. That I, maybe I saw it on TV. There's a, a beekeeper. And he said, if you don't, you guys do this. If you're a beekeeper, you can pet them a certain way and they'll like fall asleep. It was really weird. Yeah. So. And I, I'm in the bee and the, and the bumblebee was like, it looked like it was purring like my cat. Like when I was yeah. behind the ears this morning. Right. Lily. Yes, ma'am. Um, our, our, my snake was 28 feet long. 
Lily, I think you win the snake award. I don't have an award for you, but when you do go back to school, you can tell your classmates that you made the world's longest chain snake in I, camp counselor I, for 2020. I also wanted to tell you that yeah. um, uh, when we were at the creek, I went in the water once and there's like this big rock and there's like a waterfall and there are big rocks and there's this long one that's a ship. Yeah. And it was kind of, uh, it was kind of cold. My cousin was over to spend the night. So yeah. we went on the rocks and we went on the one that looked like a big boat that we could sit in. And uh -huh. so then we dipped our feet in. Yeah. And oh, it was freezing cool. cold. Oh, but I'm sure it felt good. And then when we took it out, um, and when we came back, our parents didn't, or my parents didn't want us going in the water. So we're like, we totally did not dip our feet in the water or walk in the water at all. Yeah, we I like totally creeks. didn't, or climb on the rocks or do anything that we couldn't have got really hurt on. Yeah, you have to be careful. Just trying to deny everything. Well, listen, friends, it is the end of the week. It's Friday. I want to say thank you for all the fun I have with you this week. I'll see you. I'm going to, I'll check in with you guys. We'll get together again. Okay. Last week. Bye. Oh, wait, whose last week is it? Bye. Who said that? Bye, Lily. Oh, I'll miss you. Bye. This is my first and last week. Oh, that. oh, Lily. Well, you guys, let me let you tell, let me tell you something. Once, when, when this ne next week we're off, they're going to have other activities and like classes that you can take. So Lily, you can ask your parents to log you in and you could do another class of something different, okay? Well, yeah. then next week my cousins are coming over for so, a week to spend the August. night. August. Okay, well, I'm picking up August. August. Okay. Okay, bye Hunter, bye. bye. bye.